Nice hair thingies. I think they look nice. Unironically, that's not a jab. Hi everybody, I'm Hi. Luna. Welcome back to Luna Oi. God damn it. I can't fast forward through Luna videos either because it's I have a hard enough time parsing her accent. About a year ago, I made a video about how elections work in Vietnam. And in that video, I discuss how democratic centralism is one of the basic ideologies. Racist law? That's literally not racism. I've always been really bad at parsing accents, actually. Which which is really annoying because I grew up in L.A. And L.A. is like a really diverse city. So there are a lot of people with super thick accents. I've just never been good at, at like, quickly parsing an accent. I think it's kind of like the, like an, an audio version of being able to read upside down, if that makes any sense. Like, some people can read backwards or upside down pretty quickly, you know? I think it's just their, their, their brain isn't just good at, like, interpreting info, but also interpreting permutations of that info. Um, and I just can't parse accents that well. Yeah. What do we got? If this ends up being, like, not interesting, I'll click away principles of not only the Communist Party of Vietnam, but also the whole political system of Vietnam. In this video, I will explain democratic centralism more fully and explain how it's used by our government and many other organizations here in Vietnam. But before we can begin to describe democratic centralism, you need to know more about dialectical materialism, Fuck yes, dude. the guiding Absolutely. philosophy of scientific socialism, and the official ideological foundation of the Communist Party of Vietnam. Dialectical materialism. Is that somebody's wife? Actually, pardon me for being a, a, a messy bitch here, but um, apparently um, she and EJ are in trouble. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would normally never be um, petty about this, but they both called me a pedophile, so I feel like I kind of have a right to be petty about it, actually. I feel like I've kind of earned that. Um, apparently people are talking about their Facebook status being set to complicated. I don't know. They called you more than that. Oh, they called me more than a pedophile, that's true, yeah. They also said Nazis have a point, which is pretty fucked up. Socialism is a philosophy first formalized by Marx, Engels, and then Lenin, which builds upon various earlier philosophies. One of the okay, right off, right off the bat, do not bring Lenin into this. What the fuck? What? Why would you? Why would you not just say Marx and Engels? What? Uh, <laughs> okay. Dialect, you know, dialectical materialism. The water, um, in, enjoyed by you know people like Marx and Ted and Hitler. I don't know. Yeah, where, where am I in here? I invented this. The key concepts of dialectical materialism is that all things, phenomena, and ideas are defined by their internal and external relationships. Basically, hmm. everything affects everything else, and this is what leads to change and development. Everything in our universe develops and... Um, I'm just going to let it go for a bit changes over time, and what drives this development are internal and external relationships. In dialectical materialism, we don't think of anything as being metaphysically static or distinct from any other concept. This might sound complicated, and if so, don't worry. There are links to some good videos on the basics of dialectical materialism in- Did we read this one? Which, did we see one of these? We saw one of these, I think. Nice graphics. I do like the, like, um, the spore tier, you know, like, like, 3D amalgams. Man, when did this video come out? Am I bullying? Three days ago? I'm bullying. Whatever, I don't care. She's a fascist. Okay, let's go. In the description. But to try to put it simply, whenever this affects that, that also affects this. Okay, so what she's describing right now isn't dialectical materialism. It's uh, the laws of thermodynamics, actually. Um, any force acted upon will be acted upon itself by the... So this, so this is a different thing, you know. Um, it's, yeah, it's, we're, we're actually describing causality. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, slightly different thing there. Um, well, it is called scientific socialism. Yeah, Marx came up with, the, with like, you know, Newton's laws of ther thermodynamics. They, it was just, it's just due to, um, historical revisionism that they're attributed to, uh, Isaac Newton. I change you, you also change me, and these mutual impacts are what drive all development of everything in our universe. Luna is a weirdo authoritarian, but in what world is she a fascist? Oh, literally, like, 
distinctly and consistently. Um, the um, she, her her main priority is being like a Vietnamese nationalist, but in doing so, um, she spouted a lot of reactionary shit. And I I think uh, basically it's like the ML version of fascism, where like you coat everything with red paint, but all of it kind of comes back down to like defend the state at all costs. You live for the state, um, like hyper nationalism, like a kind of like chauvinist. Um, uh, uh, endorsement of, of perpetual global conflict for the sake of like the, the, the people. Weird like ethno nationalist tendencies. Yeah, red fascism, you know, whatever. I, I guess I, maybe, maybe the um, maybe like nationalist would be the better way of putting it, but I don't think that's really fair because there are like Kurdish nationalists who are cool. You know, when I say national, when I say nationalist in reference to like Luna Oi, I'm using it like I'm saying it like in a, in a mean way, like nationalist, open quotes, pejorative, close quotes. Why do these people always come back to dialectical materialism? Do they have no other arguments? Well, she hasn't made an argument yet. The reason why it always comes back to this bad definition for dialectical materialism is because uh, this is also a fascist characteristic. Um, they, they, they strive to make their ideology a substitute for empiricism. Does that make any sense? Like, basically, it's not sufficient to have, like, a worldview and a perspective, like a frame of reference. Um, it, it, you know, your, your definition needs to be, um, it, it, it needs to be, like, a substitute for reality itself, which is, of course, what fascist groups often do. Um, it, it, it can't just be an ideology. It has to be something more fundamental. It has to be a law. Which is why you have uh, MLs with the obsession with scientific socialism, you know, which does have a definition uh, that isn't completely retarded, but it also has lots of definitions that are totally retarded. She called the Uyghur genocide a CIA psyop. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's like denied the Uyghur genocide. She's done a ton of stuff like that. There's only so much water you can hold for fascist countries before, I'm, you know. Where's the rock? Where's the gif? Give me the gif of the rock. This should be an emote. I don't know why it's not. You know, you can only you can only do the whole like I will defend every terrible thing my chosen countries do, no matter the cost, so many times before, you know, I don't know. This includes the concept of democracy and centralism. Cuba just voted 66% to legalize same-sex marriage. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that when I woke up. It's actually super dope. Cuba's legalized same-sex marriage after Cuba's voted in favor of a family code that extends out, uh, greater protection to women, children, and elderly, and now will allow LGBTQ couples to marry and adopt children. That's super awesome. And this is, uh, this is even better because um, Hispanic people are biologically homophobic. Um, so, like, they're, they're, like, overcoming their roots, you know? Is this is this them succumbing to Western um, to uh, um, Western cultural hegemony? Democrats. Bosch has never seen Gustavo Fring. Um, what what happened to Gustavo Fring's partner? I'm struggling to remember the plot of Breaking Bad. Was there any? Were, is, did he face any 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 persecution for his? No, never mind. And centralism are not and cannot be metaphysically distinct from one another. But before I explain, let's define these terms. Democracy is freedom for members of a group to express their opinions and their thoughts and any ideas they come up with and to participate in decision making. While centralism means that men. Um, I don't think democracy is limited just to the right to speak and the ability to participate. <laughs> Members of the group strive for unity in ideology, strategy, and action. Okay, think for a second. Centralism is when members of the group strive for unity in action. Does, do we... Unity in ideology and action? Centralism means that members of the group strive for unity in ideology, strategy, and action. Democracy is one of the earliest recorded concepts of political philosophy. The word democracy itself originates from a type of civil organization in the city state of Athens, Greece, dating back to about 500 years BC, with democracy meaning people's power in Greek. In Fuck yes, dude. Okay, hold on. 
500 year BC. We Fuck these bitch ass like historical paintings where all the Greeks are white, okay? These dudes were literally like like all day outside Mediterraneans, okay? These guys had skin like tanned leather, all right? I do not want to hear it any other way. Look at these fucking guys inventing democracy. Democracy meaning people's power in Greek. In Vietnamese, the word for democracy is dân chủ. Dân means the people, and chủ means to own or to be master. So dân chủ literally means ownership by the people or the people are the masters. There is no universal definition of democracy that all human beings can agree on. But in popular perception, democracy is usually understood as a form of organization and state institution in which the power of the people is respected. I don't like the language that she's using because I know that for like tankies, the definition of, of, of democracy is when like you have an authoritarian leader who nobody can displace and also all your citizens grow up worshipping them and agree with them. You know what I mean? Like, d democracy to a tanky is like you have a, a god emperor who lives in a palace, um, but all the people really like him because they grew up learning about how he single-handedly beat back Westerners like 50 years ago. So, you know, so it's a democracy. That's like Chinese democracy right there. It's great. You know, you can vote for our candidates, but only from one party, and the party chooses the candidates that you can vote for. Yeah. Most people can probably agree that, in democratic societies, power belongs to the people, and the will of the people is respected by social systems and institutions. Though it might shock you to hear me say this, but democracy is not always a good thing. What I mean by- <laughs> Really? Is that true? That is, sometimes democracy can lead to oppression. If democracy only exists for one class or group of people, or it can lead to chaos and division or even tyranny of the majority. Well, I would argue that it's not a democracy, right? If you only have democracy for certain groups of people in society, it's not really a democracy, right? Um... Such as in the Deep South, when white people generally supported Jim Crow and segregation laws which severely oppressed black people. In 1965, a yeah. clear majority of Southerners believed the government was moving too quickly in enacting civil rights laws and ending segregation. This is clearly a situation where... Can you imagine looking like this and being racist? I mean, first of all, if you look like this, you're biologically determined to be racist. I mean, you can see it, like, really easily in how they look. Um, but also, like, look at these goofy-ass motherfuckers, dude. Look at this, look at this guy. Can you, you could imagine him doing, like, a TikTok right now, you know what I mean? This dude's probably, like, 80 years old right now, but, like, look at this guy right here. Like, he would have, like, the, the no-cap hair or something, and he would be, like, lip-syncing to a song to describe the pain that he experienced when his cousin didn't give him a blowjob during the family reunion. Um, and he'd probably be wearing the same outfit civil rights laws and ending segregation. This is clearly a situation where democracy was not a good thing. No, no it was that we weren't doing enough democracy, actually. We, we simply did not, we didn't commit to the bit hard enough, IMO. Um, yeah. I don't think the issue with the Jim Crow South was democracy. It was the lack thereof, you know and the central authority of the federal government enforcing civil rights laws onto Southern people was obviously a good thing. Another thing to yeah. understand about the principle of democracy is that it can vary significantly from place to place and culture to culture. For example... See, this is what I get suspicious about, right? Uh, yeah. In the Asian Barometer poll conducted by National Taiwan University, the Vietnamese had a unique definition of democracy. The Vietnamese people popularly define democracy as social equity more than any other nation. In the same poll, most other nations in Asia define democracy as good governance, and almost no nation in Asia define democracy as freedom and liberty. These popular definitions of democracy... That's fucked, by the way. Um, obviously, uh, Asia does not have the best relationship with democracy, like, at all, you know? I guess, I mean, I guess, I guess really, like, in terms of, like, propensity for de democratic tendencies, the most up you're going to get is, like, Europe, I guess, but outside of that, yeah, I don't know. There, 
there is like a, a, a distinct conservative streak, like broadly across Asia. And I feel like, um, I, I feel, yeah, I, it's okay. It's, it's kind of like how I think a lot of pankies or MLs will sort of defend democracy in authoritarian countries as being kind of like the authoritarian leader is doing what the people want. Does that make any sense? Taiwan is on par with European Democracy Index. Yeah, well, Taiwan is heavily westernized because the PRC fled, and then we spent decades like defending them, and there was like a military dictatorship. And then, yeah, T Taiwan is not. Sorry, when I say broadly across Asia, I'm not literally referring to all of the like 20 bajillion people who live there. <laughs> I'm just saying generally, um, there there is a tendency. I mean, I'm agreeing with Luna Oi here. Luna Oi is pointing out this tendency, is she not? That's what the point of the chart that she just showed was see are much different from the popular definitions of democracy in the USA where democracy is heavily associated with things like media freedom and religious freedom so mm. Now, even though the basic idea of democracy has become popular all around the world, the ways in which people and political institutions define democracy can vary significantly from place to place and over time. And sometimes different definitions of democracy... Shouldn't we, so shouldn't we try then to appeal to some kind of like idealized concept rather than just going, oh, well, different societies have different definitions for the same word, therefore like, or just leaves in the wind? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, if different cultures had different concepts of an idea, you could be like, okay, so what are we actually talking about then? You know? See, uh, even contradictory with each other. While Vietnamese people tend to see social equity as a defining characteristic of democracy, many in the capitalist nations consider social equity to be opposed to democracy, since popular capitalist notions of freedom tend to put the needs and demands of capitalists to accumulate wealth and operate freely in the market over the demands of social equity for the working class. In this is completely true. Um, many Americans like, like pretty directly argue that any effort to make people more equal is making you less free because, like, the government giving health care means that there are slave doctors or something. I don't fucking know. So stupid. Whatever. Defining democracy. For example, in Western capitalist countries, people call themselves the free world and call the countries following the socialist <laughs> path totalitarian or authoritarian regimes. What is, what is this? What is this? What are, okay. In contrast, socialist countries define state regimes as a people's democracy and consider Western regimes as a bourgeois democracy. Okay, so this, this, what we're describing right now again is, is a, so this is just authoritarianism um, that we're talking about right now. It's, it's literally like so-called Western freedom lovers say that our one-party military dictatorship where you, where journalists are shot for going against the party line and all media is controlled by the state isn't a democracy. But what they fail to understand is that we've defined democracy to mean something different, where, it, where it's authoritarian. And therefore, therefore, they look the fools. That is, democracy which exists only for the bourgeoisie. In short, even though understanding the true meaning of democracy... So, we have to be clear about something, okay? Because there is kind of like a semantic confusion here. We do live in a bourgeois democracy, but a bourgeois democracy does not mean that this democracy exists only for the bourgeois. It means it's a democracy that serves the interests of the bourgeois. Even a proletarian in the United States enjoys more democratic benefits than citizens in many other countries around the world. Especially a lot of so-called socialist countries, because they're, you know, not actually socialist. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's important to keep that in mind, you know? Democracy and building democratic institutions have been some of the primary goals of humanity for centuries. Now, it is not easy at all for humanity to agree universally on the definition of democracy, and we are still on the path of defining and discovering democratic values around the world. As for See, listen, um, listen to the way this is described. Finding and discovering democratic values. You don't discover democratic values. It's a philosophical and political principle. You create them. They're not natural laws to be discovered. The reason she uses terms like discovery is because um, uh, uh, this, this pulls in with the scientific socialism thing. It's the idea that her political philosophy isn't actually philosophy. It's natural law. 
that's being um, observed and recorded the same way that you would discover like a new species of insect. Um, it's a very creepy and very cult like way. Yeah, no, it's 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 a it's a just a a a, a dogmatic um, rhetorical device, I think. Essentialism. This is probably the more misunderstood word when it comes to democratic centralist philosophy. Just as democracy. If you want an understanding of why it's problematic, think of how often fascists will attempt to define their beliefs as part of a natural law. They do it literally all the time. All of their political positions aren't just, you know, ideas they have. They're natural laws about the nature of the world and humanity. They're constantly, re you know, reasserting that. Um, any effort to kind of like um, essentialize and make empirical philosophical or political beliefs, uh, in my opinion, is deeply suspect. It can sometimes be bad. Centralism can very often be good. It all depends on the characteristics and form of centralism. When centralism comes from autocracy, dictatorship, suppression, and coercion is almost always a bad thing. Although coercing white Okay. White Southerners in the USA by forcing them to adopt Civil Rights Act laws was clearly a good thing in the 1960s. But that wasn't authoritarian. That was democratic. That was, wait, first of all, that was democratic in the sense that it was an act to bring about democracy. So it was by definition a democratic act. And second of all, that was done by an elected representative of a democratic federal government. That wasn't an authoritarian action at all. Democracies still involve people being told to do things they don't want to do. That's just the nature of politics. This wasn't authoritarian. But oh God, this is the Engels thing. This is the all revolutions are authoritarian, so authoritarianism isn't always a bad thing. Oh no, this is the fucking on authority meme. Yeah, any use of force is authoritarian, therefore all uses of force and all authoritarianism are morally equal. Yeah, yeah. No. Engels, why? That's not really what I'm talking about. Centralism can, and in the opinion of Marxist Leninists, should be developed by building consensus and unity with the people. It might help to think of good centralism in this sense as harmony. Marxist Leninists seek harmony. Okay, when I think of democracy, the last word I want to hear is harmony. Harmony is very easy to manufacture from the ruling elite. I don't want harmony. Democracy should be defined by discourse and disagreement. That's that. That's one of the reasons why I kind of like the fact that the United States has really low approval ratings for most of its public institutions. Um, I think that's generally a good thing. I would much rather prefer that like blind skepticism and sort of like stupid monkey-like hatred of everything above you um, than some kind of like demure, passive, submissive acceptance of the government as your uh, your shepherd, you know, your caretaker. Yes, and fascists do, of course, love talking about unity and harmony of the people. Harmony as we build centralism. And this harmony has to further develop our democratic systems in positive directions. So you see, contrary to Western liberal philosophies, democracy and centralism are not completely distinct and opposed to one another as a dichotomy. Mm. Where the more democracy you have, the less centralism you have, and the more... I don't think I've ever heard anyone say democracy and centralism are necessarily opposing forces, but we're also using different definitions of both, so, okay. Centralism you have, the less democracy you have. And democracy in and of itself is not inherently a good or bad thing, and neither is centralism. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the form... Because there's scientific law, you know, because because these aren't ideologies. They're, they're natural laws that we discover and implement the glory of the Vietnamese people in Ho Chi Minh thought. Characteristics which democracy and centralism have and the ways in which they mutually developed one another. Rather than seeing democracy- Do you think she's stupid or intentionally doing newspeak stuff? No, she's not stupid at all. This is 100% intentional. She's, I mean, she's essentially just regurgitating the propaganda of her regime. Do you guys remember when we went over that, like, the textbook stuff from Vietnam and it was full of, like, insane propaganda bullshit? that literally, like, could have read out of any Nazi textbook, like, you know, our glorious leader saved us, and, like, you know, uh, Marxism is actually where Marx wrote down that you should always listen to your leaders, like, 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 trying to repurpose it as some kind of, like, Confucianist, um, bullshit, you know? Yeah.
It was pretty creepy, yeah. I can't tell you how happy I am that over here in the West, the um, majority of prominent historical philosophers were, um, if not anti-authoritarian, at the very least, like, more individualist than some of the more prominent Eastern philosophers or whatever. Thank God I didn't grow up under Confucianism. Yes, you are, Riverboat Jack. Democracy and centralism as static are distinct from each other and mutually exclusive and oppositional. We see democracy and centralism as having a dialectical relationship with each other, meaning that they are defined in large part by their relationship with one another. You just can't have- Why doesn't she say the actual definition of a dialectic, which is when uh, competing uh, ideas or material forces or interests um, uh, in, in conflict, you identify and resolve the um, internal contradictions with them. Like what? Why? That's the okay. Have any sort of cohesive group Pitch of human beings without both democracy and centralism? If there is absolutely no democracy whatsoever, it would mean that only one human being has complete control over every other member, which is just impossible. Even emperors and absolute monarchs throughout history have had to worry about power struggles and diplomacy with different sectors of human society. There has never been a human society where only one human being made all the decisions whatsoever. What I mean, ob obviously not literally every decision, but like, okay, okay varies from one society to another is the degree of democracy and the form of democracy. Of course, it's possible that dominant classes and rulers can use force to prevent other classes from participating in group decision making. Under capitalism, workers have access only to illusionary democratic systems and elections, but they don't- Okay, so right here, this is what I mean. This article right here says satisfaction was at an all-time low in large capitalist countries and so-and-so. Democracy does not mean that people are satisfied with the country that they live in. That is not true. Um, take a look at Hitler's approval ratings, like during World War II, okay? You do not want to conflate freedom and, and satisfaction with your government. That's a very dangerous like set of things to conflate. You don't want to do that. It's really, really easy. You know why satisfaction is at an all-time low? Because we have a free press. That's why. Isn't that great? Isn't it great to live in a country where you have the First Amendment protections to just go off and say any old shit? Where there's basically no risk at all of the government, like, slam bringing the hammer down? Whereas in plenty of other countries around the world, it is literally illegal to um, publish anything without it going through the state? Pigeon! What do you want? What is your perspective on Ho Chi Minh thought with democratic centralist characteristics? How do you feel? How do you feel? Yeah? Say it again. <laughs> Me. Well said, Pigeon. Oh, yeah, PP Storm. Have access only to illusionary democratic systems and elections, but they don't really have a voice, which has been proven in countless studies. And it, that's not true at all. Um, there are some problems with the studies that you guys have probably seen on, um, on like the U.S. being an oligarchy. It's more complicated than people like Luna Oi want you to make it seem to be. Um, also, I really don't know if somebody who's a Vietnamese nationalist who defends China constantly wants to start like throwing stones in this very glass house that she lives in. And importantly, they do not have any direct ownership of their own labor. Capitalist workplaces are not democratic in the sense that the owner of the company has total control over the operation of the business. However, it is possible for workers to use force to demand some degree of control over the workplace by forming a union, going on strike, and so on. 
Even people who were enslaved historically were able to impact the systems which enslaved them in various ways through acts of rebellion, resistance, and other sorts of collective actions. The point I'm making is every group of human beings has some degree of democracy. Even Slaves had democracy because they could do slave revolts? Well, I guess that's a perspective. Uh, I don't know if that's the definition that I would use. Wait, are strikes illegal in Vietnam? Strikes are fairly common in Vietnam. About 900 were reported between 1995 and 2005. Strikes were illegal until 1996. However, even today, strikes permitted under international law are still considered to be illegal by the Vietnamese government. Oh, so the Vietnamese government considers some types of strikes that are permitted under international law to still be illegal. So they allow for some types of strikes, but not others, I think. Um, that's funny. Vietnam is an extremely cruel and unjust form of democracy. Here, the study got obliterated. Yeah, the, the oligarchy study was total bullshit. Here's what you guys have to understand, okay? So this is like, you have to go one level higher, okay? Basically, like, so the, the cucks are like, we live in a democracy. And then you, the enlightened leftist, are like, no. Didn't you see that study that showed that rich people only vote on stuff in line with what the rich people want? All the senators and stuff, they just vote for stuff rich people want. Haha, <laughs> smiley face, look at the study. And then it turns out the study's wrong. And it's like, oh, so we do live in democracy? The answer is called, it's the only good thing Chomsky ever did. <laughs> uh, manufacturing consent, okay? <clears throat> that's it. This is like Marx wrote about this, okay? The the ideology of the ruling class is necessarily the ruling ideology. Um, you don't need to like bake the votes or have politicians directly act against the interests of the people. Just have ultra wealthy people control every aspect of your media and public culture and then have them disseminate values which are positive toward yourself um, and therefore people will, of their own autonomy, vote in your interest, right? Like, think of how much here in America, um, American individualism and American exceptionalism get wrapped up in this, like, I don't need no health care attitude. Do you think that's an accident? Do you think that's, like, a mistake? Do you think it's a coincidence that people, after having consumed decades and decades of media produced by wealthy people, happen to have some kind of twisted definition of autonomy? that involves, like, them being cucked by the government and not being given basic provisions that other people in countries less wealthy than our own enjoy? Yeah, it's not a bug, it's a feature. It's manufacturing consent. Or a form of democracy which relies heavily on illusion <clears throat> and fake democratic systems and sham elections. They are Is the press free or not? It's free in the sense that the government won't stop you from publishing stuff, which is really important. It's not free in the sense that it's of equal accessibility to people regardless of their uh, wealth. Obviously, that's capitalism. Always various ways in which members of the group can affect the social group as a whole and demand a voice even if the amount of resistance and suppression to popular sentiment within the political system is quite high. You also just can't have a human social group without some degree of central unity. This is really obvious, right? If there is absolutely no unity in thought, strategy, and action, then it's not a group at all. It's just an incohesive bunch of individuals, not a social group. Okay. All right. Pardon my anarchic biases here, but that's not necessarily bad. You can have a social group with an emphasis on centralism and a lack of democracy, like an autocratic dictatorship. Though dictatorships are prone to failing when some other individual or group rises up in a revolution or a coup. You can also have a social group with very little centralism and a lot of democracy. Though these kinds of groups tend to be very short-lived, since members will tend... You might notice that this video is directly saying that we need a balance 
between um, freedom and harmony, and harmony is being substituted for authoritarianism. Isn't that setting off, like, alarm bells in your head? She's literally saying, in order to... This is... So, first of all, this is like baby's first politics, where it's like, we need a little bit of socialism and a little bit of capitalism, and that way we get equality, you know? Um, but uh, it's also... Um, like, yeah, she's essentially saying, like, we need to balance the people's freedom with authoritarianism, which I am also using words like harmony and unity, you know, uh, in, in tandem with. Like, why is she using the same term to describe authoritarian governments and harmony? Uh, is it harmonious to have an authoritarian government? You know, like, why? I don't think those are... I think that you can generate harmony within a society, like, sort of naturally. When people are free, um, they'll gravitate towards their self-interest, and if people belong to the same basic demographic classes, uh, their self-interest will align, right? Like if you live in a proletarian state or a dictatorship of the proletariat, you could have a free society in which people gravitate towards proletarian-oriented politics, not because they're being guided there by some like central authoritarian government, but rather because it aligns with their material interests. Funnily enough, Luna Oy's video feels kind of like a rejection of Marxian um, materialist analysis here. And to undermine the group and break away if there is very little unity of thought, purpose, and action. Most political movements which have fallen apart throughout history have fallen apart due to a lack of center unity in vision and strategy. Hmm. I wonder why the Marxist-Leninist is, imp is impressing this value upon us. The ML, after they just got done shooting in the back of the head all the anarchists after the Russian Revolution ended. If only we, <clears throat> if only we had unity. If only they had believed in submitting to uh, the unifying force of our uh, vanguard party. Collapsing and splintering into disarray and infighting. What we believe as Marxist-Leninists is that it's possible to develop both democracy and centralism within a human organization or society at the same time. Not only that, but having strong and well-designed systems of democracy will bolster central unity in theory and practice, just as having well-aligned centralism will enhance democracy. You might notice also that even if you're super charitable, and all she's actually saying is like, we need a democracy, but people also need to get along, then this entire video becomes incredibly vapid. There's also nothing ML about this at all. Nothing about this is Marxist, or even like, nothing about this is even leftist. This is just like Sesame Street logic right here. That's if you're being charitable. In reality, I think this video is loaded with like authoritarian apologia. But if you're being super charitable and you're just like, um, oh yeah, she's just saying that you need to balance f total freedom with also people should get along, smiley face then, like, this video is so vapid and so politically void that there wasn't even a reason to make it, you know? The authoritarian dog-whistling is the purpose of this video. And, of course, it can work in the opposite direction. Poorly designed democracy will break down central unity of purpose and action, which will cause democracy to further break down as factions develop to tear the organization apart. Wh which organization is she saying fell apart? with the collapse of the Berlin Wall? In other words, democracy and centralism have a dialectical relationship. They mutually impact one another. Better democracy- No, you would say they, they, the contradictions between them are resolved. Ah, uh, I can't- Ah, uh, man, dude. Ah, uh, fuck. I can't believe people say I don't read theory. Democracy helps build better centralism. Better centralism makes democracy worse, and so on and so forth. So our goal as a political activists and organizers and revolutionaries is to understand and leverage the dialectical relationship between democracy and centralism so that they mutually develop one another yeah, yeah, to make our movement stronger, more resilient, more democratic, and more unified over time. So remember, democracy and centralism are always developing and changing one another over time within any given group of human beings. Oh. And our job is to understand that mutual development as we build our revolution. And we have to understand how democracy and centralism developed one another over time. If you look at the state of democracy... I just... Where are we going for this? But it's... it's democracy and centralism within a group of human beings at any given point in time, you're really only looking at a snapshot of how they before the door emerged reforms. The political economy... Oh, thank God. Talk about something in the real world. Holy shit. ...characteristics of the group over time. 
As one example, back in the 1970s, before the Doi Mui reforms, the political economy of Vietnam was way more centralized since we had a planned economy under the subsidizing system. I have a video on that. Link is in the description. This is, um, this is when Vietnam went capitalist, right? And therefore got a lot wealthier because capitalism is better than state capitalism. Uh, listen, okay, this is the, of, of the competing ideologies in which we live today, you know, there is one ideology against which I will defend laissez-faire capitalism, and that is state capitalism. But anyway, that system didn't work out for a number of reasons, and so we instituted the Doi Mui reforms. Doi Mui means renovation, and basically it means we move to the socialism-oriented market economy, which we have. It's, get you an ML bitch. You can get her to do anything if you say it's socialism oriented. Um, it, tell, tell her that uh, if she takes the trash out, it'll be like a step towards the, um, the, uh, the, the, you know, the socialist principle of gender unity and labor performance or something. And she'll be yeeting that shit out of the window. Um, you just say any old shit, you know? Have today, and the government and economy became less centralized than it was in the 1970s, though it is still more centralized than bourgeois liberal democracies, since the government and Communist Party still exert a huge amount of control. Yeah, I saw this, by the way. Um, this is fantastic. So not only did Vietnam have to go capitalist to, um, to not let its economy collapse into nothing, but also Vietnamese income inequality is massive. Look, this is how much more the top 10% makes than the bottom 50% right here. So here we have the Russian Federation after the collapse of the USSR. It went from here to here because, you know, um, yeah. The United States has steadily climbed, uh, of course, because we're the US, USA, USA. Finland and Sweden are both relatively low. China, uh, China has climbed. But Vietnam, based Vietnam has been consistent. They've always been the worst. Look at that. It's incredible. Vietnam's income inequality was bad and is bad. Um, Chiden, sorry, I saw the uh, the Biden emote in chat. I would defend Chiden. Ho Chi Minh's successor. Fuck, what do you think the Chinese translation is for no more malarkey? Hold on. Mai Zhu Geng Dao De Ei. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't even know how to pray. What? Okay. Are you drunk? Is the thing drunk? Hello? Okay, what if I say no more nonsense, right? That's probably... I don't know if malarkey has... Okay, this is a whole new sentence. Dude, that's dope. Can you imagine some ancient fucking Chinese fossil getting up there? Oh, it slows down if you click it again. Okay. How do you undo that? Whatever. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, Vietnam's income inequality has always been really fucking bad. Over the economy, through price stabilization programs, state-owned institutions, heavy regulation, moratoriums on corporate ownership of farmland, and many other centralized controls are generally weaker or don't exist in liberal free market capitalist What is this? What, are we, what am I even doing? What is this? Okay, Vietnam went capitalist. Well, fully so centralized. The other, or both, is anti-fascist and anti Sorry. I just realized that ending this bit on um, Chiden was probably the best we were going to get, and that there's probably not much of a point in continuing from there. All right. Go team. Good hustle. New Innuendo Studios? Hell yeah. That's a banger? Hell yeah. Have you tried to learn any languages? No, fuck no. I'm terrible at learning languages. Um, I'm really, really bad at it. She went on to talk about Ho Chi Minh Vietnam land policy. Oh, you mean the policy of like kill one in every thousand people for funsies or whatever? Um, that's a banger. Have you tried listening to the true socialism? Stop asking me if I've seen things. The answer is yes. <laughs> well, that might be a tanky dumb fuck, but how's there saying there's a dialectical relationship between democracy and centralism wrong? That's the thing. It's not wrong, but she's misusing dialectical materialism. She describes dialectical materialism like a fucking thermo, um, thermodynamic process. Like, 
things affect other things. No shit, everything affects everything else, obviously. Like, yeah, of course. He's like, many fo foolish Westerners believe that two things are unrelated, but I, wise Eastern political philosopher, am here to remind you that actually these two things are related. Wow, fucking thank you. Great. Very wise. Um, it's not, it's, it's not an adherence to dialectical, like, or like, <laughs> like principles, you know, that the, the resolution of the agitation between the two competing forces, the internal contradictions that you try to find, uh, the, 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 the synthesis, you know, wise posting, dude, wise posting was such a good, mildly racist meme and it should have lasted longer. I don't know if they stopped doing it because it was racist. Um, but it was pretty good. The problem is, is that, like, it doesn't have to be racist. It's just that people are racist, so they're going to make it racist, you know? Why is posting, you mean the Confucius memes? Don't worry about it. Chilleft, you have posted that five times, you're banned. I even acknowledged you the last time. I read everything that goes through chat. You're getting in the punishment box for one hour. Don't ever repost links. I see everything. Did you guys know Ho Chi Minh was actually a big fan of the United States before we um, epically trolled him? Yeah, that was some uh, top 10 betrayal shit right there. While traveling as the cook's helper on a ship in 1912, Ho Chi Minh traveled to the United States. Um, <clears throat> he may have lived in New York City, Harlem, and Boston. Dude, can you imagine Ho Chi Minh and fucking Harlem? I want to I wanna see like an edgy adult comedy of... Um, Ho Chi Minh in Harlem, like, getting along with, like, early blues musicians or some shit, dude. That would be so fucking... And, like, the, the like, the bit would be that every once in a while, like, one of the, um, one of the, the, like, musicians or something would say something, like, vaguely interpretable to one of the horrible things Ho Chi Minh would later do, and Ho Chi Minh would go, oh, hmm, you know what I mean? Like, what, like, one of the musicians would say something like, you know, I, I, I hate the people in this town. If I could just be first chairman of the government and then have one in every thousand people killed for no reason and have their corpses dragged to a ditch, you know, I would, mm, you know, <laughs> honestly, Ho, Ho Chi Minh's one of the better ones when it comes to like the so-called socialist revolutionaries, really. Um, of, of all the, of all the, the duders who are like ML aligned, Sankara probably is my favorite. And then probably, um, uh, probably Castro and, the, Castro and then probably Ho Chi Minh. Or maybe Ho Chi Minh Castro? I don't know. Castro wanted to end the world. Did you guys know that? Castro is fucking insane. Shay? Shay wasn't, Shay wasn't a uh, statesman. He was a revolutionary. I'm talking about, um, people who led the countries, not people who were just revolutionaries. Um, yeah. Posadas Castro? Literally, though. Did you guys know that? Back during the uh, the Cuban back during the Cuban Missile Crisis, like JFK and um, was it was it Khrushchev back then? JFK and Khrushchev were both like trying to not end the world in nuclear hellfire, and meanwhile, like Castro Castro was like leaving voicemails on on Khrushchev's phone, saying like the people of Cuba are ready to give their lives for socialism. Literally, like, pr Premier Khrushchev, like, give give us the order, like, d do it, launch the missiles now, like, li that's not a joke, like, he was at, like, Castro was literally saying, like, end the world, we're ready, you know, that's not a joke, he was actually, yeah, that, no human has better embodied that fucking emote than Castro during the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, Jesus Christ, <laughs> he was trolling, but he meant it, yes, he was trolling, but he completely, 100% fully meant it. He was fully sincere to that. Um, you're giving way too much credit to JFK. That's true. JFK also wanted to end the world. Khrushchev was probably the dude who was being the most um, reasonable, maybe, possibly, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. But nobody compares to Castro. Lol, he said, Lamau even? Yeah, for sure. JFK was a good president? No. Um, yeah, he did some good things. He was also fucking insane, you know? I mean, yeah. Um.
Man, could I could I get like could I get like quotes on this? Wait, okay, hold on. Castro Wikipedia. I, I don't know if there's like a specific I don't know if there's like a specific um like quote. Cuban Missile Crisis. Hold on. I just, I need to see if there's any bit here where Wikipedia, in their usual, like, disimpassionate tone, was like, Castro tried to end the world by encouraging Khrushchev to fire the nuclear missiles at the, uh, the U.S. embargo, or the U.S. blockade. Um. Get, get, let me just get to the header, the contents. Okay. Khrushchev wanted to install RMBM nuclear missiles in Cuba to even the power balance. Although conflicted, Castro agreed, believing it would guarantee Cuba's safety and enhance the cause of socialism. Um, this, um... Yes! Castro urged Khrushchev should launch a nuclear strike on the U.S. if Cuba were invaded, but Khrushchev was desperate to avoid a nuclear war. Castro was left out of the negotiations, which... Uh, yeah, Castro was left out of the negotiations because he knew he was a fucking madman. They were, they were like, they had a call between Washington and the Kremlin, and meanwhile, like, um, uh, from, from, like, Havana, he's trying to wire in, like, screaming into the, uh, the receiver on the telephone, like, fucking... He's, he's, li he's like the fucking, he's like the fucking military guy from, uh, Iron Giant. Uh, launch the missile now. I mean, didn't Kennedy invade? Yeah, the the Kennedy and the CIA basically like but Kennedy and the CIA did to a bunch of Cuban exiles what the Russians are doing right now to their conscripts. We basically gave them like five rounds of ammunition and like a pistol each, and then made, like we're like, yeah, go swim to Cuba. <laughs> it's pretty bad. It was pretty unethical. We kind of just sent them to die. It was it wasn't great. Yeah, Mansley. Where's the giant Mansley? Feeling betrayed by Khrushchev, Castro was furious and soon fell ill. Holy fuck! He was so mad that Khrushchev didn't end the world, that he got sick. He was so angry about it that it made him ill. Me too. The idea was they'd establish a beachhead and it would inspire the U.S. to send troops. Yeah, which is pretty fucked, right? Like, hey, hey, bunch of people, go and, like, die with insufficient equipment. Maybe if you die good enough, like, we'll send in reinforcements. And then we don't. Of course we weren't going to. Obviously, if we wanted to invade Cuba, we would have, but, like, the problem is the relationship, like, with Russia, or Soviet Union, a bunch of other stuff. Also, I think Cuba's pretty naturally defensible. Um, what's the difference between France pledging to use nukes if Russia invades the EU? Well, in that case, it would be a nuclear country invading a nuclear country, um, in which case the use of nuclear weapons is very much on the table. Um, I don't think, wait, when the Cuban Missile Crisis happened, they didn't have missiles, like, established and ready to fire on Cuba, did they? I know they had them on the island, but weren't they, like, months away from, from them being, like, ready to fire? Or am I wrong on that? They did? Okay. We also weren't, uh, we weren't threatening to invade Cuba. We were just, um, establishing a blockade to prevent more missiles from making their way into Cuba. All the same, like, we shouldn't have done it. Like, the Cuban Missile Crisis was literally, like, our fucking fault. Like, 100%. We, we, put, we put nukes in Turkey, for fuck's sake. Like, we had nuclear weapons uh, just a couple hundred miles out from Moscow. And then we get mad when they, like, move it over to their ally that's right off the coast of Florida. Like, fucking... Like, it's literally just our fault, you know? Like, why the fuck would you do that? It's, su it's such stupid dick-waving, too, because neither country ever developed an effective anti-nuclear, like, deterrent strategy. Like, we never... Star Wars didn't work. We didn't have, like, fucking lasers to shoot them down or some shit so um so it didn't matter if you had nukes that were super close the defense systems would always catch it in time it would always send a counter salvo there would never be a way to avoid um the end of the world is it true castro slept with thirty-five thousand women including one of the assassins sent to kill him yes and no he did sleep with an assassin sent to kill him he did not sleep with thirty-five thousand women uh, there was not time to run a country and be a revolutionary and sleep with that many women. The God's honest truth is that when it comes to people like that, okay, they don't even fuck that much. You know what they actually do? They spend their entire life dedicating themselves to a cause, and then the few times they do have time to fuck a chick, they do it so good that the legend spreads, okay? That's what they do. They're constantly in the company of beautiful women, uh, but the man's got to be busy. Yeah, there's a logistical problem. So the real trick is just 
you just sort of embody the passion of your political ideology as you fuck the women that you do fuck. And then they think like, oh my God, like my holes are ruined. I'll never be satisfied with another man. This guy must get around constantly. But in reality, like all socialist leaders, Castro was an autistic soft boy who um, spent his, uh, his, his days sort of in a tent uh, playing with model trains and uh, organizing the economy of Cuba.